was it that sent me, Hernan Cortez, to conquer the land called Mexico? Was it the King of Spain? No. Was it Veracruz? No, he didn't even want me to go from Cuba. Was it God on high, Jesus Christ? Ha! Ah, it was Quetzalcoatl. Montezuma, you see, the king of the Aztecs, had been approached by his priests and priestesses who said that they had dreams of strange people coming across on the ocean on mountain towers with, with clouds pulling these great vessels to them. And on board these vessels were strange people with pale skin, unusually colored hair, and bizarre clothing. Ah, we Spaniards. And it was predicted that we would come and we would bring the Aztecs together. Ha <laughs> ha, yes indeed. For the benefit of the King of Spain and Christ on high. Yes, we came. Again, Veracruz didn't want me to go, but I raised up a, a, a ten ships and close to a thousand men, and out we sailed in 1519. And when we came to shore, we traveled with our cannon, with our muskets, but most magnificent, with what Montezuma thought were deer. They were our horses. Oh, he struck all with awe and fear. And they gave us great tribute, silver, gold, in their great city on a lake, Tenochtitlan. There were many battles fought. Montezuma brought together his allies, his friends, and we rose up against his, his enemies in Cholula. What did we do? I had to have a show of force. Forgive me, but I am a conquistador. We brought them in, 5,000 in the village, in, in a great square in Cholula, and I hid my men with their cannon and muskets and horses. And then when the moment was right, we opened fire. And there was great panic and many tried to flee, but the exits were, were limited. And yes, many fell. But dare I say it was for the greater good of bringing Mexico under Spanish rule by our great God. And then the lands of Mexico became part of the Spanish Empire. Unfortunately for the Aztecs, that massacre, it was nothing compared to the way many died from the pox, smallpox. Was it our Christian God who ordered them to be decimated by smallpox? Or the Aztec God. All I know is I was able to be the one, Hernan Cortez, who brought Mexico to Spain. Ferdinand Magellan. I stand between two worlds and bring them together. I first went to King Manuel of Portugal, the land where I was born, and I begged him to look at these charts and see that the Pope's line of demarcation may work to the advantage of the Portuguese. Why, all to the east of the Atlantic, through the, knee, the, the land of Brazil, the lands on the east were designated by the Pope for Portugal. The lands to the west, 
for Spain. I said, all signs show, if we sail far enough south, we can go around the newfound continent of South America and then cross a small ocean in a matter of days. And there we can come to the spice islands of Malucha and Cathaway. But he said no. And he cut soon my pension. Thus I went to Castile to Spain. And there King Charles agreed to support my expedition. I took five ships with captains from Spain. And in September of 1519, we set sail. We hugged the coast of Africa after visiting the Azores and the Canary Islands. And that irked my Castilian captains. They claimed that the Portuguese would come after us, but I thought they would never imagine that I, Magellan, would go so close to the shores of Africa where the Portuguese could find us. And that proved true. We then sailed out across the Atlantic Ocean and came to the Brazilian coast on Easter. And there, Again, I decided to hug the coast of South America. And that again irked my Castilian skippers. And Cartagena and Mendoza and Quesada, they rebelled against me mutinied, as did many of the Castilians. I was forced to put down this mutiny and to have Mendoza beheaded. His men, the other mutineers, put in chains and forced to work for five months. And Cartanega, to make an example of him, I left him deserted on an island off the coast of South America, and we forged on. But there was still in the air mutiny because the passageway that I knew existed was still much farther south than anticipated. But eventually, as the weather grew cold, we came upon a strait. We weren't sure which way to go, so I sent my cousin, the captain of the Santiago, around to the south. And then we, in the Victoria, and our other ships, we went to the north and we were to meet. But the San Antonio, it never came around. As things transpired, the mutineers got hold of my cousin and the pilot of the ship stabbed him and then turned around with most of our supplies and returned to Spain. But that did not force me to turn around, no. I continued through an outrageous, raging strait. Now, it bears my name. It took 38 days to navigate, but eventually we found our way through. And when we did, we came upon such a calm sea that eventually that southern sea was named Pacific. And when we came upon it, my eyes, filled with tears of gratitude, blessed were we. Now, I imagined it would just be four or five days to navigate this great ocean and come to Malacca, where my servant Enrique hailed from, and then we would be in the Spice Islands, and we could claim that for Spain, the lines of demarcation would permit that. It took, however, 99 days to sail across that vast Pacific Ocean. A Narian island was found. 
and my men suffered from scurvy, lack of food. My son even took leather from boots and other objects and boiled them to have something to eat. My officers survived. I believe it was because they did not get scurvy because they ate uh, preserves, quince. But eventually we came upon an island known now as Guam, took aboard some supplies and pressed on to islands now called the Philippines. Now there, we met with a certain Raj, if you will, influenced by folk from India and the Muslims. And I sat down with him and his wife and explained the way of Christ, forgiveness, love, heaven. And soon he converted, but gave warning that on a nearby island there was a warlike Raj by the name of Lapu Lapu, a great and bold fellow. And I said, ha, fear not, my new ally, my new fellow Christian. I will bring this Lapu Lapu to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we sailed across and came upon the island, Cebu, I believe it was called. And I felt that I could bring in my ships and fire our cannons and our muskets and our crossbows. I only had then to, oh, 60 men. I left 11 back upon the ships. And then we began to fire. But it didn't impress Lapu Lapu. I waited and went out into the water. The cannon fire did nothing. It, it, it was why well, the ships were too far away. They were blocked by coral reefs. Well, I waded in and thought that he would see our power and recognize the power of our God and would, as did the previous Raj, submit to Christianity. Instead, they attacked. Why? We only had 50, they had about a thousand. And Lapu Lapu ordered his men to go for our legs, the parts unarmored. I stepped forward into the fray and believed by the power of the Lord within me that I would be able to prevail. But instead, I took in my leg a poison dart. And soon along with over 10 of my men fell, the others fled back to the vessels. And there, in the Philippines, I fell to Lapu Lapu. And because of that, Lapu Lapu is still venerated in the Philippines. But how did it come to pass that I became the man between the world's east and west? I sent forth Juan Serrano and Enrique who now found his way to freedom. And he became, this fellow from the Philippines, the first human being to circumnavigate the world. And with but one ship left, after three years of traveling, Juan Serrano came back. We had started out with 250 men from Castile, from Aragon, from Portugal, from Ireland, from Africa. But only 18 returned three years later. But they, from my expedition, circumnavigated to the globe. And thus, I am that bridge between the two worlds, East and West, with this story still to tell.
Was it my conquest of Panama? Or Peru that brought me Pizarro great fame? Now, it is because I managed to acquire the largest ransom ever paid in the entire history of the world for a human being. He was an Inca chieftain, Atahualpa. He had just defeated his, his half-brother, Hassar, in a, a great battle, and now he was resting near a spring when he gets word that Pizarro is coming with strange beasts and booming weaponry. And thus, he came to greet me. Well, I sent my priest forward, and he said, you must acquiesce to the way of the king from Spain and the new Christian god. But Atapuhala wondered why should he do it? And then what was the answer he received? The boom of our cannon, the clatter of our horse, the fire of our muskets. And many of his warriors fell, and we took him. And we said unto him, You must acknowledge the great Christian God who has brought here to your land a power you have never seen, proving that that is the proper God, not the one that you Incas worship. Well, we gave him a Bible, but what did he do? Haha, <laughs> the blasphemer! He threw it down! Then we had little choice. The priest said, you have a choice. You can die a heathen being burned or a Christian. And we'll end it quickly. <coughs> know what I mean? <laughs> he chose the latter and died a Christian. And many of the Incas died through the parks. And on I went in 1533 to found the city of Lima, Peru. And how did I do it? Why, I was given by that Inca ruler, Atahualpa, 24 tons of silver and gold, the largest ransom ever paid in the entire history of humanity went to me, Pizarro. <laughs>